Hi Dave, welcome back to the May Night Podcast. Hello Dave. As some of you probably know, we have been trying something new recently. We've decided to spend some time exploring our takes on changes in the cinematic universe. So for this episode, we will be doing our gut reaction scores as usual, but we'll only speak for a maximum of 10 minutes. Then we'll do our cinephiles. We have 50 minutes in total. The film for this episode is Life is Beautiful, a dramatic comedy released in 1997 that explores the power of optimism and the human spirit in the face of the Holocaust. We're going to start with our gut reactions. I'll get a timer going. Who's going first on this one? I guess it'd be me again. Right? Your go. 50 minute timer. Very interested to hear your score on this one. What if focus? Well, that's a one. Okay, let me just check what my score was. Okay, I am ready. Freddy, are you ready, Freddy? I am ready. All right, Freddy. <laughs> Count me in. Brilliant. Ready. <laughs> ready, steady, Freddy. All right. Three, two, one. Seven point seven. Oh, Nine point two. What? I love this film. What? It's so good, man. Seven point seven. Oh man, I just think it's amazing. Wow, that's a that's got to be one of your highest scores yet. Tell me, what is it? What's the magic? Is it is it mm. Guido? Is that is it him that does it? Yeah, I guess the the magic of his performance. Yes, he's um, buffoonish and slapstick. But I guess because it's foreign language, maybe I I I, okay. I like it, and I just think it's so different to anything apart from like American comedies of the twenties to forties. Yeah. Like you don't see that style of acting in English films, English language films. Mm. And I found it, I do find it funny, or I find him just magnetic to watch. And yeah. so there's that. So then there's the whole the first half. And the second half, the yeah. dichotomy between it, with him staying consistent as a character, the rewatching the first half. When I was, I watched this when I was a kid. It was the last film to make me cry. Oh, I remember definitively made me cry. Okay, when I, I must have watched it when I was like eleven or twelve or something like that. And I was like, oh, like I don't really remember. I didn't remember much about it. I remember I enjoyed his comedy first yeah. half, and then I remember the emotional impact of the last half being like whoa okay and re-watching it i was just so pleasantly surprised by how much i enjoyed his slapstick routine at the start all the comedy yeah. the ridiculousness of it the kind of charm of it all of the sequences with the um princess what was it principella or what, the prin- princess Prince, oh, did you watch remember. it in italian i did yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah so whatever yeah. it princess I, in italian. I was confident i'd be bringing that to the table and i can't remember how Prince, it was principa or something like yeah. that so all of the the shtick his whole way that he all of the events that he kind of put into place and how he used things that he knew about this scenery to his advantage for the scene where he just prayed to the uh, like when the key got dropped oh, out, he got good. his hat. Yeah, yeah all of yeah. that. Loved it. I was like, ah, oh, this is great. I'm really, really enjoying it. And then the second half, the emotional weight I found of the Holocaust itself, because I was so, I so enjoyed the brevity he brought to the, sorry, the levity is it that he brought to the situation mm-hmm. his character his yeah. ridiculousness and then how he continued that on for the benefit of his son that when the emotional scene hit i don't know man it's just i found it so powerful yeah like he knows he's going off to his death and he just kind of plays up with the, yeah. the funny walk at the end yeah. i knew it was leading there so i'm like what what's it like compared to the last time i watched yeah. it i didn't cry this time but i was like whoa again it really hit me because of how he was as a character yeah and then to see how they approach that situation where i've watched other holocaust films i've never watched one that approaches it like that oh and i just felt like it was so um, for me it was so fulfilling a watch that's why i love it i i I was like i finished it i was like that is one of the best films i've watched i love that film i think it's amazing it 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 resonates on an emotional level very well, doesn't it? Yeah. That that juxtaposition between mm. uh, G- Guido, I think is how you pronounce it, is that? Yeah, I believe so. And, and the environment is just, um, 
it really works very, very well, doesn't it? There's no denying it. And the idea of whoever's idea it was to make this film it is a great idea. Like, I think there is inspiration from a real world person's experience. Right. But my understanding is it's quite a loose inspiration. I, I don't know. I only know Robert or yeah. Benini kind of create it or yeah my under- so my understanding is there was some inspiration from some real world events but it's not right. like it's not like it's written loose inspiration yeah mm. um so really i mean i think you can just attribute it to the writer it was an it's an awesome idea it's so much mm. fun i i personally thought that uh benigni i found him I just got a bit irritating after yeah. a while. And like that is just something that I force it. Like you can't, if, I can't be he's... more specific and, and constructive with it. It's just for me, it got to the point where I was like, okay, I'm sick of this now. Like if, if he, if you found him interest, if you found him irritating at all, it, it does ruin the experience. Yeah. If it doesn't do it for you. For me, it, it's fine. Even So how, Okay, talk to me through your experience. I know we've got to do our what ifs, but yeah. briefly, let me understand a bit more about your experience with this film. Yeah, sure. Uh, so obviously, um, watch it in sub, mm-hmm. right? So I'm not actually the fastest reader, and so that can impact sub films for me because sometimes I'm having to work quite hard to stay up speed with the, mm-hmm. the subtitles. So that always has some of an impact on my enjoyment of a thing. Um, I... I I I knew where I knew where it was going. Mm-hmm. I knew that it was going to be a Holocaust scenario, yeah. and I knew that the idea was that you'd part this guy in this situation. But that was basically all I knew going into mm. it. I didn't know anything about the character. I'd never watched any of the scenes. My understanding is when he translates to the German guy, that's a very famous scene. That apparently, what did you think of that scene? It went on a bit long. <laughs> I found I I found it <laughs> so funny when I originally watched it when I okay. was a kid. We all watched it as a family. I yeah. remember us all. That was the only scene that I really clearly remember being like, "This is really funny." Did and you I'd find fa- it funny this time? Uh, less so. I, was, I I got to it. I was like, "Oh shit, it's the scene." Yeah. But I found it less funny. I think that the specific um, subtitles that I had weren't as good. Because they basically gave the subtitles as the German person was seeing it, speaking really? for Guido. And I was like, kind of ruining the jokes here oh, a bit. Damn it. What about you? Did you find it funny at all? Um, Not that scene, no. 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 But there were, funny? there were moments that I did laugh. There were a couple of moments where I laughed. And then there were a few moments where I saw when... <laughs> Like, you know, when you breathe out your nose a little faster. <laughs> but, but there are a couple of moments where I actually laughed at what happened. Right. And so it did successfully make me laugh and it did successfully make me sad. Um, but it was a little bit irritating. Um, his, his, he's obviously got so much screen time. Mm. And so like when you've got such a massive caricature, if it doesn't, if it's not a caricature that you like to spend two hours sure. with, then it just... It knocks it back, but basically everything else about the film was, and even that was really, really good. It was Mm. just not for me. Mm. So I felt like 7.7 gave it quite a good sort of like, this is, I can see why this is, people like this film. It's a good film. I really, I, I thought it resonated with me. It was emotional in, in a lot of very good and different ways. And it had that range to it. But for me, just the main character was just a little bit too annoying. Mm, yeah, um, fair enough. Was, You're making me think if I hadn't watched it when I was young, how would I feel about it? I thought that when now? you said it, yeah. Yeah, because I, I was just like, oh man, I can't believe how long it's been since I've watched this. And it was such, it had such an emotional hold over my memory. I was like, wow, this really affected me, yeah. this film. I remember really, yeah, this yeah. Is, stood the test of time for me. So when I watched it, I was like, oh man, that's great. It felt yeah, like he was a character in a children's film. Yeah. Like that was why I found it irritating was it actually felt like mm. it was being aimed at a child and it was kind of like... I'm not sure I'm not sure if you saw this in your research, but so he kind of shot to international stardom from this. 1997 okay. it comes out. It wins Foreign Language Film of the Year at the Oscars. 
And also he wins Best Actor, which was a massive upset. For that role? Yeah, Best Actor, not just Best Foreign Actor, Best Actor. Uh, he won the Oscar for wow. Best Actor for that role. Really? Uh, and famously at the Oscars, one of the most famous moments in Oscar movie history. And um, I think he did it the first time for the foreign language film. For the foreign, When he won the foreign language film, he was like animated beyond belief and everyone's like this is hilarious watching this guy he couldn't believe he'd won oh. he's like made a real slapstick performance of getting up to the stage everyone was like this is brilliant that he's won go him then he wins a the, a big award like one of the top five awards yeah they announce him as like roberto he wins and he gets he stands on the chairs and climbs his way because he was quite far at the back he wasn't expected to win so he actually stood onto the the seat. Obviously, it was a theatre. <laughs> stands on a chair and like hops his way down to chair by chair on the top of the chairs. Like he, he like God. climbs his way through the crowd. Very famous moment in, in uh, Oscars award show history. Him receiving this award, like it was a, a massive That's upset. Hilarious. Wins the award, and I'd really recommend you or anyone else who's not aware of it because he really did not live up to that stardom after that okay so watching that was his high point of his career uh, and then after he actually followed it up with a film that was like universally panned and his performance at university is like one of the worst follow-ups in movie really? history because well, he he wrote directed and starred in this one it was a massive hit and he obviously got the accolades for it as well and then his second one i believe is like a I might be getting this wrong, but it's like a Pinocchio or a clown based. Okay. He, he plays kind of another vaudeville. Uh, he, uh, he's obviously had some kind of theater, like circus performing background, something like yeah. that. And it leans on that um, training that he had. And it was like, came, <laughs> it did very poorly critically yeah uh, and I, don't, I can understand i imagine that. he's massive in italy still but i don't think he ever really yeah became much of a famous figure outside of that one year and what i mean for me what, who cares if you made life as beautiful you've <laughs> done a pretty good job no you're not wrong yeah i don't know i feel like giving him the best actor role for that can only be excused if the other performances that year were atrocious because like it was so one-dimensional like it was so it was it was never required yeah. to show anything other than children's show level slapstick humor uh and it was just uh, i think the idea of him getting a best actor award for that is just yeah. absolutely bananas but so it was uh ray Fine. oh no it's not that one must have been a different year so what was uh what was your score 9.2 that puts it joint second place for you with two other films so in first place you've given a 9.8 to the princess bride and then in second place, joint second place with 9.2, you have Life is Beautiful, Dune Part 2, mm. and The Thing. So those three films, how do they sound together for you? That's a nice... I tell you what, they're very different to each other. I These like that. These are some... I, uh, I stand wholeheartedly by my nines. I know we had some conversations earlier about your nines and mm. whether you feel like you need to um you, you have some which explore you feel them a bit like, more liberally i am very happy with i mean i i feel like i influence the films that we watch quite a lot mm -hmm. i'll say like let's watch yeah, these yeah. films and yeah. we've chosen films that i very much like <laughs> these are right. great so for, for, for me you know when we're talking about top you know, 20 films of all time. Yeah, well, not okay. not top 20, I'm saying my personal top 20. Yeah. We've hit a lot of them <laughs> with those nine, so I'm very happy with that. Yeah, I, I can see that. Mm. I can see that. But June Part 2 is a new release. Yeah, I, I, I really... I was funny enough with film. that. I'm still thinking, do I prefer June Part 1? I, I love them both. <sighs> Did we we didn't do we haven't done Trump, Paul. All right, well let's uh, let's get back on track then. Go um, on then. Should we just go with you doing what if first? Because yeah, mine. I, I, I'll be honest. Mine. I, I struggle with this one because I. I really... What if Guido's strategy transformed the camp's morale? In this segment, I'm going to express the only what if that I felt could be could carry some weight and still impact the film enough where it makes some sort of change but 
keeps what I like about the film. Um, so we're looking at Roberto Benigno's Life is Beautiful. This film, renowned for its heartwarming story of a father's love and imagination in the face of unimaginable adversity. But what if Guido's strategy to protect his son, Josue? Joshua. Was that it? Jo- <laughs> 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 Forgot that. Protect his son Joshua extended beyond just their family and influenced the entire camp. So imagine then Guido's original mistranslation um, of the German soldier's orders. Uh, originally an incredibly famous scene, as Jamie said in the um, film. Very funny. Doesn't really have any impact apart from uh, he does it. The other camp is like, what are you talking about? He goes, ignore it. Just listen to Ben Ben. Bernardo or Bernadito, whatever his name was. So instead, what if this sparks a larger movement within the camp? And as he continues to shield Joshua with his inventive game, Guido starts to convince other Jewish prisoners to join in the pretense. I forgot how this part went when I rewatched it. Uh-huh. Been a while. I remembered, obviously, he had this game involved. But I was interested to see how he went about it. There were some really fun moments, weren't there? Like when they went on the um, intercom. Um, and really, I know everyone's in a, about as shit a situation as you could be in. But it's clear that they said no one else is going to partake in this. It's just going to be him yeah. and Joshua. Yeah. So um, what if effectively the others start joining in, maybe bit by bit? And the idea being that it becomes like a collective morale booster. Yeah, so okay. they actually become a part of it. And it's not just the effect that he had on one individual, but the effect that his magnetic personality managed to have in maybe saving some more lives. Um, one poignant example that I thought of is when Joshua um, mentioned the man who was crying and saying that they're turning yeah. us into buttons, they're turning us into soap. Yeah, soap, that was it. Um and Guido does his classic, you fell for that, that's ridiculous, yeah. can't believe you fell for that again. Now, he'd done that move before, hadn't he, with the kids, and he kind of continued the same thought. I'm thinking instead there, we use that as an opportunity where we've got someone here who is completely broken by the horrors of what they're seeing. Maybe the only thing he can latch onto with Guido's guidance is the idea of this game and at least saving this child from the horrors that we all know what's going on. Mm. So examples like that, examples obviously Bernardo was kind of, I think he was the closest to maybe playing up to it. Um, But realistically, he just didn't say that it wasn't a game. Yeah. Now, what if we actually had a few more of them who really brought in kind of the camaraderie, the pulled together, you know, this is you know, about solidarity between the, the Jews that were in this camp. We're going to work together to protect this one child from effectively this clearly we know is, is this horrific event that we're all witnessing and we're all party to. Now, outside of that one example, what I would say is it would be quite easy to do. Like they could, they could easily say, okay, the initial um, conversation he has with German, he had a, a couple of people intrigued. And then day by day, when he starts doing the events and doing all the hard labor and coming back and, and talking to the kid, like, wow, what a day we've had. Look at all the points we've got. Yeah. You know, he starts bit by bit, people joining in, getting to the point where most people are maybe at least referencing the point system. Maybe then you have the scene with the, the one person who just is not gelling with this idea the button guy and and they managed to turn him on side through another event of solidarity and talking to him about um you know doing this for the child's benefit um and you wouldn't even necessarily have to have that that pandering moment where he does the heartfelt speech maybe it's just guido's magnetic animated personality is enough to really turn people on side because he's expressed that he can do this with the love of his life maybe you can do it with these people and bring some element of light to an incredibly bleak situation now at the end of the film i thought maybe we could even add a tie-in where when guido decides to go and um meets dora that was it when he tries to go and he goes out, doesn't he, to try and save Dora. It ends up being the death of him, but he keeps his son safe in that that thing. Don't talk. You don't say a word. Yeah. This is the last bit of the game. Um, maybe we add another scene where other prisoners 
or maybe another sacrifice or, or they they manage to save Joshua when he comes out they see yeah. him and they they say he's won the game maybe when the tank comes it's also the prisoner saying yeah this is your tank so it could be a bit more of a bit less of a solitary moment for Joshua yeah add a few extra elements and maybe take a bit of the load off the just performance from Roberto Benino as I was well just about to say that that was probably the one gripe that I had with the film was too much airtime for that caricature mm -hmm. and now you've just opened up the opportunity for interesting characters top tier performances like you've really opened the door for some sort of solution to that problem there yeah and he's clearly like you know he's a ball of energy so maybe he just overdid it yeah. if you one one complaint you can have with the film one you have is maybe he just does the same thing for a bit too long yeah and my um, nostalgia is maybe affecting me not seeing that as much. This, as you say, would give you an outlet for a few other characters. Yeah, hundred percent. And also, like the, it feels like if that did happen, nobody watching it would question it. Like it makes sense that Guido's personality mm. would have that impact on the people around him. It also made sense that it didn't. But I certainly wouldn't, having watched the film for the first time, if that's what would have happened, I wouldn't have gone, that's weird, why is that happening? Yeah. It would have just made sense to me. It's like, that's who he is. He does have that impact on the people around him. Yeah. I, when I was coming up with my what if, I did think about this. And my thinking was, if Guido had an impact and influence on the other prisoners, maybe he'd have ended up getting shot for it. Mm. Like if, if, the, if there was a, if there was a a morale boosting source that the German soldiers had detected, then like that could actually put Guido's life in quite a lot of danger. Like it, so, he, he so perhaps an perhaps enemy. if we follow that thought, his death scene comes maybe twenty minutes before the end, rather than right at the end, mm. and that's when you get a real opportunity. Like he could still be done in almost the same way. Yeah. Like he could still realize he's about to die, have to do his march off and have that moment of real sadness where they literally take him into a corner and kill him off screen, which I remember thinking like the, when I first watched it, I was like, holy, it was like, I'd never seen someone do a death like that in film. Right. Where they're like, it's final and it's happened and we've not even shown you it. And so you think, is it, what if, what if it has he survived? You yeah. um, uh, you've seen him come out of all these scrapes, a the whole film yeah. and just amble his way through in the most creative ways. Yeah. You, you can't help but think when you hear the gunshot, he's going to come around the corner. Yeah. And you, naturally that's what you think is. It's, it's such, a, such an unbelievable, it's such a really, Raw. really well done. Yeah. Painful yeah. moment. Painful and, um, moment. Which makes it, even when the guard comes around, like I even now, I remember rewatching it thinking like, is he going to, I know he's not coming back, but you, you kind of hope that, he comes back around the corner because he's hidden or he's played dead. Like that's his character and he doesn't. Yeah. And that's what's so, yeah, so great about yeah. it. Yeah. Um, so you can still do that. And I think that scene is worth keeping right. in some sort of, some sort of way, but maybe instead he ha now we need other people to share the load. Like they need to, yeah, they absolutely. need to step up. Maybe it's button guy. Maybe it's Bernard, you know, whatever his name is just reinforce the whole broader themes of the community coming together and sort of like uh, Joshua, once he is, comes out of the prison camp, obviously he's reunited with Dora in the film, mm. but for argument's sake in this what if universe, he wasn't reunited with Dora because the likelihood of her making it out of that situation was quite slim. Then you've got this situation where it could show how the survivors of these situations come together to kind of form almost pseudo families to kind of fill mm. those gaps with each other. And, and, and that could kind of give Guido a greater legacy to have yeah. amongst the, amongst the community. Yeah, for sure. It would be, it would be, a, I actually genuinely think that could improve the film. Potentially. I don't, it's one with all of these, what ifs that we do, we do them for the purpose of, you know, interesting conversations. We, we, we know that we're not going out there and, doing the hard work to improve a film. It would be interesting to see someone attempt it and see if someone could execute it well. Yeah, yeah. Should we wrap that up there then? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, well, I enjoyed that. Actually. Thanks so much for listening. Let us know what you think in the comments mm -hmm. below. We've got videos coming out this week on Silence of the Lambs, 500 Days of Summer, mm -hmm. and obviously as well, we've got a couple on Life is Beautiful. So if you enjoyed this, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for listening, Dave. Cheers, Dave.
All right, cool. What we got? We got 25 minutes. Nice. Not too bad. All right. You can bash out yours. My what if is structured similarly to the last one, which took us about 45 minutes to get through. <laughs> right. So um, we'll, we'll try and be a little bit more... Life is Beautiful follows Guido Orifice, a vibrant Jewish Italian, through his life during World War II after meeting Dora, the love of his life, starting a family, and ultimately being sent to a concentration camp. Despite the dire circumstances, Guido displays remarkable bravery and spirit, infusing optimism and hope into his young son, Joshua. Interestingly, when Guido and Joshua are taken away on a train to the camp, Dora, upon discovering their fate, insists on joining them without any coercion. Oh, right. Okay. While there is room for debate regarding her reasoning, it got me wondering how their journey might have been different had she not made that choice. In other words, Freddie, what if Dora never got on the train? Mm. Could Guido have managed an escape? Would their chances of survival have altered in any way? Could Dora have offered some help from the outside? We've this, got 10 minutes. I can't believe I this didn't even cross my mind. It's just the, it seems like the the perfect change. Alternative <laughs> way. It's just, it's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. I figured we'd start with question number one. The consequences of never having Dora at the camp would have impacted the characters in many ways. And I think it's first worth asking, would it have altered their chances of survival mm-hmm. at all? Okay. So the first thing that comes to mind is Guido wouldn't have taken those ridiculous risks to try and cheer Dora up with Mm -hmm. the gramophone and the speaking on Mm -hmm. the time, which could very easily have got him killed. Yes. So immediately there, I'm thinking he stands a better chance of being or of staying alive. Well, I mean, he, he wouldn't have died in that way, would he? No, no. He he died because he went to find her. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So you, you've immediately got that. Um, <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. So, if Dora doesn't get on the train, they all live. <laughs> they all live. Oh no, I didn't even think of that. No, I did not die. Oh no, well, there goes my whole segment. Thanks so much for listening, guys. We're gonna do it anyway, we're gonna power on through. Yeah, of course, Let's... we've we've established that. What if maybe, did, maybe, what Guido, if Dora... maybe Guido fell in love with another woman? <laughs> <laughs> you have to see what if Dora never got on the train? Everyone <laughs> survives. Um, Guido would have had more attention to focus on Joshua specifically, which mm-hmm. might have helped him stay a little safer. Um, but I do wonder if Guido is obviously his main thing that he brings to this. The thing that makes him special is how he has this optimism, this spirit in the face yeah. of such brutality. Mm-hmm. And I do wonder whether we just brush over the importance of that familiarity of knowing that Dora is there with him Mm. and whether he would have cracked under that pressure eventually if he didn't have the love of his life nearby. Would that comfort have made him stronger or do you think maybe not? I I just don't see that having enough of an effect. I I think just his whole character has led us to believe he is going to be he never cracks he's going to see this as he's going to make a joke and he's going to see it as glass half full yeah and that's going to be that like he'll never ever 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 change like the scene like I, I don't know if you found this funny but i even though i knew what was happening in the scene you know when he's first carrying the anvil oh yeah and he's like like oh my god i'm just gonna let i'm just gonna let it go what are they gonna do yeah, yeah. they'll yeah. shoot you whoa yeah. <laughs> like, i knew yeah. he was gonna do it but i still found it funny um Stuff like that. I, I I feel like he's not having Dora there wouldn't have made the difference for him psychologically. He'd have known what he had to do and he'd have stayed positive. So I, I think I think in answer to question one, mm-hmm. how would it have altered their chance of survival if Dora hadn't have been there? They would have been much more likely to survive the situation. <laughs> he, would, he would have survived. He would absolutely have survived. Well, goodness me. Okay, question two. With no concern for leaving Dora behind in the camp, Guido might have considered an escape attempt. Mm. Do we think that he would have tried this with Joshua in his care? And if so, do you think he would have been successful? What was his opportunities for escape then? Well, he only showed consideration of it once the German riddle guy let him down. Mm. So that's quite late on anyway. But what was his consideration of escape? It, it wasn't, there wasn't anything practical, but it seemed obvious to me that he 
was mm. thinking. It, it certainly looked like he was thinking. Yeah, about it to me. in my opinion, though, he was thinking of it in a way of I'm going to um, whatever happens. I still have to leverage his the German okay. doctor's yeah. help here. Like his hope stemmed from this guy can help me. He's you know when he was trying to get him to help on that final riddle. Mm-hmm. He thought he's going to help us make an escape here. And he wasn't. He was just trying to help them with a riddle. Yeah. And I I don't think there was anything clear cut. There was enough clear evidence for me beyond that. That after that, he was thinking, I'm going to make an escape. So do you think, obviously, he didn't know the Allied forces were on their way? No, he didn't. So would he have just stayed there? I, I, I don't think we can presume that he'd have gone escape at that point. I don't know if it'd have been dire enough because... Bear in mind, he's now in a very comfortable situation in the camp. Yeah. Like, he's not moving from that servant situation. So, but Joshua is a child that shouldn't be alive. Yeah. Mm. And so, and the longer they're there, the longer they're at risk. So it's where that that. desperation sets in. But equally, escape attempts, I looked this up to be sure on it, they're, they're, very rarely successful from concentration camps yeah like the likelihood of dying on it is very very high and with him having his child joshua with him i was just thinking like would he have taken that risk yeah i don't think he well he was a bit of a uh say, maverick it's guido he, if, if, yeah if anyone would i mean would. in the in the in the universe in which this took place mm. with this character we've seen him time and time again pull off mm. bold cunning moves yeah so character wise maybe you wouldn't put it past him but it was it'd be a big risk on his kid's life yeah what did he uh if we knew what the time frame was between that last like the serving meal where the yeah. doctor doesn't and the allied the forces are right and then the allied forces if that's a night or if that's like a week i think it's a very a short period I would say he doesn't, I don't think he tries to escape. You don't think he tries to escape without no. Dora being there. I think I'm with you on that. And I if he does, I'm, it's before, isn't it? It's like when he realizes well, what are we in for here? Maybe yeah. he finds out his dad got killed. Uncle. Uncle, was it? Yes, it was. When he finds out his uncle dies, Yeah, we, they don't really have any scene showing that. Yeah. So he almost just, it's almost like he doesn't think about that in our our viewers experience yeah, maybe yeah. he's focusing on his own task saving his saving his son but maybe they could have added something about him finding about that and thinking okay i know now that the shells all the kids have died right yeah they've killed all the kids joshua is the only kid if they see him they have to him but he doesn't even seem to ever consider that he doesn't in that situation no. and he and they don't lend us to believe the reason is dora i think if they did yeah then we could safely say he would try and make us he's only saying because of dora but they don't lead us to believe it. it's like we're trying to say that's the reason right yeah i'm yeah yeah i don't think he would have tried it and i, I don't know if if dora wasn't there i don't think that dora was the only reason that he stayed yeah i'm with no. you on that i don't think that i think if dora wasn't there he wouldn't have tried to pull an escape he didn't seem to be demonstrating it's like you just said he didn't seem to be demonstrating an inclination towards an escape attempt even with the and and it it didn't seem to be the things that you would need to be relevant and on the top of his mind when thinking about an escape didn't seem to bother no. him he didn't seem to be bothered that joshua was the only child on the camp which no, would be the did, thing did not at all probably be the thing that triggered it um which but, makes you think which actually makes it even more you know the thing where you said would he have broken down yeah. The fact that that didn't affect him at all just <laughs> shows what kind of man this is. Probably fine. <laughs> Can we pull out the definition of psychopath? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, the, the one thing I would say is if he is seemingly not considering an escape attempt in the face of this very blatant danger for his child of being the only one left alive. Mm. could the re- the only reason that you can come up with for why he might behave like that is because he knows that an escape attempt with 
the addition of somehow coordinating it with Dora is just not even in the realms of possibility. And so he just doesn't even think of it. Like, it's just like, there's right, just no okay. point in trying this. It's not in his, his... She's, I don't even know where she is kept on, the, mm. like, let alone coordinating an escape with her. May, maybe, but I still think we're, we're reaching, aren't we? We're reaching to find I don't a think reason. he would have tried to yeah, escape. Yeah, I reckon it's safe to assume that up until I think the point where he would have been considering escape was would have been after the point where things had got better, mm-hmm. like if yeah. they hadn't yeah. have been better, and they yeah. did get better for him. He got into a position where we are safer now, as long as Joshua can keep staying quiet, yeah. which we know he's good at. Uh, I should we should be safe in this, or we should be safe, we're safer than we were, yeah. Presumably, as well, some kids would eventually show up again, and then they'd be knocking about for a week or whatever. I don't know if that would help. In what do you mean, kids would show up? Like, as in they—they they obviously they have new uh, prisoners. I don't, I'm assuming uh, there's a different yeah, word for it. Turning it up every yeah. So there'd be other kids, but let's mm. say that he wouldn't. This leads us to the final question. Okay. With Dora not in the camp. She might have been in a position to help from the outside. Yes, actually. How That's much of a thought. difference do we think she could have made? So, one thing that I want to understand: Dora's mother. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, we didn't talk about that at all. Wow. Did she engineer them getting taken off. That's oh, what yeah. it seems like. Oh yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. I was not watching for it. She's not a fan of the Jewish. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she was just straight up Nazi indoctrinated, wasn't she? Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. To, and her, her grandson, who she came to see first time seeing, and then just the sends him to a concentration camp. Happy birthday! Going to you got a nice surprise tomorrow. That's dark. That, isn't it? Mm, wow. That's pretty fucked up. Yeah. That in is. hindsight. So, relationship with the mother would be strained. Yeah. After yeah. that situation. Yeah. Mother probably has some sort of plan for making it seem like not her. And it almost certainly isn't just the mother, probably a few of them. I mean, were they going anyway? It might have even been a case of she knew it was going to happen and she couldn't have stopped it, the mother. Because mm-hmm. let's be honest, first they first they were making it clear that he was a Jewish worker and Jew- his shop was Jewish. Then they were only letting him kind of, he wasn't allowed in certain stores yeah. and they were clearly berating him more and more and more. I mean, would they have even been able to stop him going anyway? Yeah. At that point they were probably just saying we're sending all I Jews don't to the concentration think that camp. In, I don't think that Dora would have ever forgiven her mother. I don't think yeah. that, I think that relationship is irreparably damaged so, so after t- that. What what could Dora do? So here was my thinking was the family tie would be no use for what we've just said. Basically, they're not gonna help and, mm-hmm. and Dora ain't gonna want to have anything to do with them. And so the only other option is that she joins the Italian resistance and aids in the alliance. Hmm. Uh, pushing forwards in their arrival but realistically with information and yeah okay so inf- yeah she becomes a spy like okay. if she just tells them like where the german uh the i guess it's german occupied italy at this point where the german stuff is where the munitions are where they're like then like that probably Which, but could- does she know any of that well, I mean, she lives there, so she probably knows some. But they relevant. get on a train, don't they? I mean, it's like, yeah, yeah, maybe for that town, but we don't know how far away they go. Do they go to Ooh, Auschwitz? Do they go to a? Con- do a they go point. to Germany? It never uh, to specifically says, something. but from my research, the way that the camp is run is very much more like a German camp than an Italian camp. So historically, the camps in Italy were not death camps. Mm. And, and, so, and the and guards they, were German. And they and the guards were German. And they treated them way better in the Italian one. And the in, in Life is Beautiful, the concentration camp that they are in is very representative of German camps. So they get some... I don't know the history of how many Italians they excommunicated over to Germany to mm. these death camps. But it's interesting that they did. So if they've taken them, I think Dora can do... Nothing. Nothing. Nothing all about that. She ain't gonna get she could, involved. Uh, what she could do, she could join, as you say, the Italian resistance and then use whatever information she knows as a librarian's wife. F- yes, formally, m- formally engaged to a um, person in the military, but like, she formally, you know, how much she does she know, right? Much. So, 
she's a she's a bloody school teacher, right? So she could use whatever information she has, even if it is a bit. It probably is only relevant to that area of Italy. Yeah. How's I've got gonna... a point that's relevant. Go on. We know that they can't be too far because of the conversation between Guido and Joshua when they got off the train. Okay. If they'd have been on the way to Germany, it would have been days. And Joshua wouldn't have been like, oh, I don't really like trains. You know what I mean? Mm. Like if it was days stood up in that cart, that would have been a very different conversation. So then... Italy. So they must, it can't have been that long because that that conversation was very like, that wasn't very nice. No, it mm. wasn't, was it? It wasn't like we've been on this train for like seven hours stood up in like a dark, cramped place. But the, the obviously not all of the concentration camps, If I don't know how many were even in Germany. Obviously Auschwitz is in Poland. <laughs> then maybe... I but think that this camp Poland was in still, Italy. I think this camp was in Italy. So did a death run camp by Germans. In Italy, ran by Germans. Yeah, I think so. Because I think Germany occupied some of Italy. I don't know if they owned it, but I think there were like Germans operating in it during the war. Yeah, right? I imagine operating, but Italy was on the German side. Yeah. So it's like they wouldn't have needed a massive German presence. Yeah. They wouldn't have needed a fully German Camp. camp they could have had an italian do camp they border italy. does italy have a border with germany i don't know it's quite low down germany's a bit more up there we've had this map where are we so we have italia austria just gets in between i'm guessing that's germany there yeah mm. austria and switzerland are between okay so austria there must be i think there must have been some camps in austria yeah you would expect so so maybe yeah. if they were at the top of italy they told to us where they were at the start of the movie. Do you remember? I don't remember where. In the very opening frame, it I says... I would imagine that it is right, whatever it is. I would imagine that they haven't made some sort of massive geographical mistake. <laughs> You'd have thought so. Anyway, what I'm really. thinking is more how far are they from the place where they mm. took the um, Guido and Joshua. Yeah. Well, let's let's come up with a conclusion. What do we think? I think she does absolutely bugger all. If she doesn't go to the camp, she's going to be of no use, and yet everyone would have survived. Everyone survives. Well, you've seen all the evidence to our lovely viewers. <laughs> what do you reckon? Let us know what you think. Do you agree or disagree or have some, some different take? Um, if you enjoyed this, we have videos this week on Silence of the Lambs, Life is beautiful, of course, and 500, days of, 500 days of summer. So if you enjoyed this, don't forget to like and subscribe. Please do check it out. Thanks so much for listening. Cheers. All right, we, uh, we, have to, we have six minutes and 55 seconds to fill in the rest of the movie ranking sheet. Let's just rattle through Let's it. Let's do it. Plot. High. 809. Higher, right? You don't like the character or the performance. But story was great, the plot isn't like it? a help me out here. Right, so yes, it's comedic in elements, but then you've got the really que- quirky, mm. cool love story of him going after her in a really interesting way. Yeah. Getting her, yeah. them having a child, yeah. time skip, which is a good it's well done time skip with a child yeah. growing up, and then it turns into the Holocaust film, but can, manages to retain the sentiment of that and then so have nine? a real emotional impact. I'm convinced. I am convinced. Okay, you, I'm happy with nine. You reckon ten? Uh, I really do like it. To be we got three tens there. Not Jaws. Uh, what, how the hell is Jaws not ten? Uh, Chinatown, 12, 12 Angry Men in The Godfather. Let's get nine. Okay, cool. So, uh, character. Um. Right. Uh, this is hard this one character for this because like even uh, Guido is that what I've been calling it Guido so let me ask you this do you dislike the character or the performance not dislike but which one yeah which which one did I find irritating I, I, I think that the thing that I didn't like was on the paper Okay. I think that I think that it was too 
every single scene was that kind of behavior and there was no kind of like some more some less moments mm. it was just always at 100 percent. for me i'd probably say that the performances um, I, I i don't think that there are many, I know it's Italian, but let's say it was in, in English. I don't think there are many performances that could fill out that magnet. It was like a, a presence, wasn't it, what he was doing? So I would say if you had a gripe, it probably was more of a character. Okay. And what characters do we have? So let's say Guido's a good character still. He's still a good well, character. Well, this is why it's difficult, because even though he was a little bit irritating, like, God, it was... You needed him for that film. Like yeah, that, the way like, he works is the film. Like the like way his, the his outlook thing. in life is the film. So it's definitely good. Yeah. But there parts I find him a little bit irritating, but like, like his magnetic personality. You know what it reminds me of a little bit? Paddington. Have you ever watched? It? I haven't. So we can't even. He goes into a he goes into a prison <laughs> with this unshakable optimism. Mm -hmm gets everyone to be his friend <laughs> and i'm just like now thinking this is just so much well yeah. obviously you know paddington's not quite as dark but yeah um, i quite liked dora i yeah, think she I was dora quite cool was she cool. was nice she was I love, interesting i loved their kiss uh, yeah, the, the, yeah. Under the it's table. a bit of a weird acting kiss like i didn't really like the way yeah the but i just like the way that she kind of actually was like I agree. i'm full i'm full in now i'm head over heels the i love was the good. courting the whole courting even yeah. the bit where he goes from being this ridiculous character to being like oh, i want to make love to you like <laughs> yeah it's good it was in italian because it could have been a bit weird seeing how they do it in english but it was cool that they went from that to dramatic yeah, yeah and for me it landed and, and their their love story i actually really liked that's a bit ridiculous. We lingered on character, but I think it deserved it. I, yeah. I think uh, I think the uncle was good as a side character. Joshua was absolutely fine. Yeah, Joshua actually, I think, did a really good job. I mean, it helps that he was in a foreign language, so I can't really pick it apart any else. But I reckon we're going, is it a nine? Let's say eight. Okay, reckon, okay, eight. we're going to go with eight. We're gonna go I with think eight. we'll give a, a performance of the goods. Okay, dialogue. So... I really think it's, I think it's very funny and well, like the story is no more plot, but there are really funny moments. Um, <laughs> like obviously it's translated, but you get the German scene, a classic. And I will say when I first watched it, I found it hilarious. Um, a lot of his dialogue is, you know, kind of punny, but you know, stuff about the egg man and, and the riddles um, and, like even stuff like when they actually see that they're getting let out, when they see the allies coming in, they're all running off, and he's just like, "Right, we're out of here. I'll see you. Let's let's start an let's start an anvil factory." Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, 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 things yeah, yeah. Say. Like even though it was in Italian, I was like, "That is funny. I can see that that's yeah, a funny yeah, yeah, line." Um, so for me, I I thought it was a great dialogue. What do you think? I, I think that. I pretty much agree with entirely that. Mm. I, I think that I've had difficulty with plot and character because I'm not sure if it's a 10, a 9, or an 8. And then uh, dialogue, I sort of feel the same way. I don't think this one is a 10, but mm. I do think it was re it was great. And then it's like, was it, you know, whatever's better than great? Nine. Mm. <laughs> sure, just nine. Six, seven, great, nine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nine out of ten for dialogue. Performance. You know, I reckon give him a ten. <laughs> what did you put? Six. Six. <laughs> right. Six. <laughs> Six. You thought it was He rich. was annoying. <laughs> All right, go on. We'll give him a ten. Give him, we'll a, give ten. him a ten. We'll give him a ten. I gave he him his marks down on character. I feel like these are getting very high, very high. I'm going to have to knock it down a peg. Visuals. Visuals. You know what? An amazing visual in this. All right. Okay. Here we go. What? Another nine. <laughs> this is a great film. I think you I think you might have undersold it. You'll get a reaction. Um, the scene where he's got him on his shoulders, he's taken back, and he goes to that pile of bodies. I thought that was terrible visuals. Oh, really? I just it looked like, it like a Attack on Titan. There was like 20,000 bodies there. It was insane. I know, it was ridiculous, but I just remember thinking like, I, I almost thought, is it maybe even a dream? It's like a wall of just... Yeah. A little bit like just being like, fuck. Like he's walking, he's in the, 
I remember being like shocked at how he's basically kept it under the lid for so long. He just turned and there's a fucking wall of bodies. Amazing moment. Yeah. Okay. But visually, visually for me, I looked at him and was like, I think even on a low budget, you could do better than that, guys. Come on. Like it, for me, it, I kind of, I, th- I think it felt sort of like the, because it was all um, almost like, um, you know, those French mime masters. It felt like it was a circus act. Yeah. And so it almost t- tied in with that for me. Um, all right, so should we just say seven? Yeah. That's a bit more like it. Sound. Sound. Seven. <laughs> Impact. It's uh, got to be a high one with the Oscars story. Yeah, and... but has it stood the test of time? I would say that there are, I think it's an amazing film. Mm-hmm. For me, fantastic. One of the, one of my favourites of all time. Um, it isn't one of the greats of Italian cinema Okay, from some of the lists I see. I, I've, I looked at a few lists after this thinking, I wonder how other people rank it and rate yeah. it. And a, a lot of them will be like, it, they won't have it on it. They'll have like the Dolce Vita, eight and a half. Um, right. Some other ones I can't remember. But yeah. I was surprised that this isn't mentioned as one of those greats. And to be honest, outside of it being very highly rated on um, IMDb, Mm-hmm. It does have a very high rating on that. Right. It's not talked about that much as a great foreign language. It's not like okay. an automatic, this is a great foreign language film. Had you heard of it? I don't know. I couldn't say for sure. I think I could have. I don't think it's, you know, Roberto Benigno, I, I, Benigni, I, I think if he'd have gone on to do greater things, uh, he probably would have been. But for me... Not sure the impact is that right. It's big enough for it to be a foreign language film that did mm-hmm. cross yeah, yeah, over. Yeah. Quite largely with the Oscars thing as well. But not one of the foreign... It's almost like it was the accolades it got were greater than the impact it had oh, or yeah. has had. Yeah. Because other foreign language films are more fondly remembered and didn't win a mainstream yeah, Oscar. Yeah, 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 100%. So, okay. Give me a number. What are you thinking? I'm thinking eight is great. Okay, I, I think I'm happy with an eight with that one. I think I, I'll, I'll happily give that. Right, so. Ba, 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 where are we? Life is Beautiful has now been rated out of 10 in all nine categories using the May Night system. We have ranked it the following. Fred's Enjoyment, a solid 9.2 out of 10. Jambo's Enjoyment, 7.7 7 out of 10. Plot, nine. Character, eight. Dialogue 9, Performance 10, Visual 7, Sound 7, Impact 8, giving it a, a, an average score of 8.32 out of 10, making it the blah, 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 11th greatest film of all time, nestled in nicely between Chinatown and The Princess Bride. You know what? They're Some good neighbors. Films there. They're they're good neighbors to have them. That's that's a, that's about where I want it on the list. It's up in the it's up solidly in the top half. It's kind of around where the top third starts. Yeah, I think it's a good a good kind of um, midway point between both of our scores. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pretty even. We uh, have definitely shown it some respect in some areas, and we haven't been too influenced by my in love of the film as well yeah i reckon that's well great i mean great ranking please if you've listened this far thank you so much i really appreciate it um we've got videos coming out as you probably heard throughout the episode uh, please check us out on youtube let us know if there's any films you want us to do thanks so much for listening dave cheers dave see you soon